τα ταξίδια σα που πάτε. Guardan en los ojos la ragazza, con los ojos verdes como el mar. And when the world crowds your space, remember days when noise was silent. Hey, Rodi, come And here we are, we're very honored to have Mario Strangulis back in the spotlight here Thank in you. New York. Yeah, uh, Mario, welcome. You Thank you. are very loved in the community. Uh, you are loved around the world by Greeks and, not, and of course, Phil Helene. <laughs> uh, your career speaks for itself. Introductions are not necessary. Thank you. Maria, tell me about what you're doing these days. You've come back for another philanthropic uh, event. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I came back from uh, Australia, from Sydney, which was uh, an amazing, uh, it's just a beautiful country, Australia. And uh, Sydney, they were celebrating the 60th year of, uh, of an old people's home, which was very, very important uh, for, you know, we had ambassadors and dignitaries and, uh, you know, a, a fantastic audience uh, supporting this cause because I think it's very important to know where you will be living at a more mature age in that sense. And, uh, uh, you know, our, our concerts were, went very well, uh, the audiences loved uh, the new idea, you know, the intimate an evening, an intimate evening with Mario Frangoulis, something that I haven't done before. And now I'm here in New York uh, presenting the same program with a few changes. Uh, at Jazz at Lincoln Center. At Jazz at Lincoln Center. So, um, you give back to the community and senior citizens are a very big... Uh, part of our lives that we also need to give back and you yes. you just you just anytime people ask you to do something you do and it's Thank so you. you know commendable I try I think that's uh, that's our duty in a sense you know as artists instead of uh, always following your career and your dream you have to also uh, y you know take with you the people that are uh, in need or the people that need you uh, in certain circumstances and uh, and, uh, and use my voice, my talent, uh, whatever I can do to help uh, in, uh, in these circumstances. Absolutely. Tell us about your repertoire. What are you planning for this uh, event? Well, it's called uh, an intimate evening. So we, we didn't want to do the, the very big uh, numbers, even though some of them are very big, like Vincero Perderò and Nights in White Satin. But uh, we are calling it an intimate evening because uh, basically it's five musicians five great musicians, they play for ten, they sing, they play two instruments each, they, uh, um, they're um, amazing uh, musicians, um, mostly from Berkeley, uh, mostly uh, from Greece, you know, so they go back and forth. Always? Yes, I've played, uh, I've played with them for the last uh, two years. I met uh, three of them in Berkeley, Berkeley College of Music. And, uh, and it's always good for me to uh, introduce young Greek musicians to the world. Uh, they're fantastic uh, players, they're, they're very good on stage, you know, they have a good uh, uh, personality. And, and you uh, all do well and you play. <laughs> exactly, so uh, we're singing songs from uh, the French repertoire, from the Spanish repertoire, uh, songs like Hijo de la Luna and Granada and uh, uh, a lot of uh, songs that have marked my career in this last uh, nearly 30 years. <laughs> it will be 30, 30 years, years next year. In the sun as we say in Greece. No, uh, I'm not gonna even go it's there. Really, it really is, it really is. It really is. Yes, I remember so. the first time I saw you, I was 25. Yes, oh my god. <laughs> well, you are 25. <laughs> yes, you didn't hear that. <laughs> We have a time clock. <laughs> you guys have time machine. Wonderful. You look beautiful. Thank you, as you do. As always. You don't, uh, time does not pass with you. Really, you look wonderful. Thank you. Um, Maria, you, I mean, you can sing any genre. You can do anything. You are a true artist. You really are. What do you feel good doing mostly? Um, I loved uh, musical theatre when I performed you know, in London, for example. Uh, the only difficult part with that was doing eight shows a week uh, and uh, repeating the same role over and over again. You know, I like to change. Uh, um, so I think being an actor is going to be my ultimate uh, goal uh, one day. I, I never thought I was going to be a singer in any case. It sort of happened. Um, you are blessed by God with that voice. <laughs> I thought I was an actor with a good voice, but uh, it, the way things turned out, 
my career has moved more into the music uh, industry, in a sense, making records, good records. Uh, I love the idea of working with uh, artists who are not exactly uh, classical or come from the same genre of music that I come from. Uh, like, for example, Justin Haywood, uh, that I uh, had the pleasure of working with from the Moody Blues. Uh, I remember sending him a demo tape uh, of Nights in White Satin in sort of false Italian. And he, uh, he said to me, not only I love uh, the song and I would love you to sing your song, my song in your, in your album, I would offer to sing it as a duet with you. So, of course, for me, it was a huge honor and it was a great success. And uh, it is the mark of a great um, uh, man, of a great colleague who is very generous, you know. And uh, I want to follow that example, you know, in, in the years to come with uh, younger people, younger uh, musicians. Uh, if I can do anything to, to help them uh, in, this, uh, in this industry, especially nowadays. How is Greece these days? What, do you, what are your thoughts on, on the future of artists, aspiring artists in Greece? I think, um, you know, uh, despite all the issues and all the problems that we have, the socio-economic uh, issues, I think uh, there is a kind of renaissance, there is a kind of um, uh, rebirth of, of so many young people and musicians have the need to express themselves through uh, writing great songs and uh, talking about the circumstances, talking about uh, uh, relationships and relationships between them and friendship and family issues and you know their love for their country and uh, um, I think um, it's a creative a, time. A very creative time, even though uh, you know I think I think out of uh, out of difficult situations you find. Uh, uh, that arts are growing, that younger people, uh, you know, find themselves uh, expressing themselves more and more uh, during this period. And a lot of theatre, I see, in musical theatre in Greece. A lot of theatre, a lot of musical theatre. I mean, I, I didn't get a chance to see Evita, but I thought Evita, uh, from what I saw in the trailers, uh, it looked like a great uh, production. Wonderful. Uh, so, um, you know, Greece has always loved musical theatre, especially you know, since uh, the Aliki Vujuklaki times and uh, and Rena Vlachopoulou, of course, who did all those uh, great uh, musical theatre performances. But uh, nowadays, even more so, I think uh, they they have an idea, they are more trained in the musical theatre genre and they bring people from outside of Greece, you know, who have trained uh, uh, in this, uh, in, in this uh, genre of music and they, uh, they collaborate very well. What would you like to see more of in Greece, as far as theatre is concerned? Mm -hmm. To be honest, I have a dream that these great uh, theatre spaces, like the ancient Greek theatre spaces, are uh, given to the people, to the uh, artists, a lot, a lot more. Uh, I mean, I, I love the idea of them... Special request, listen. <laughs> I love the idea of them being rare and, and the fact that uh, not anyone can, can go there, but uh, the idea that uh, they are far too expensive and far too uh, difficult to get a date and when you're giving a date then you don't have enough time to put on a production because these theatres are very big. You know, they're 5,000, 8,000, 14,000 seat theatres. Uh, uh, but uh, it would be great for the Minister of Culture, whoever that is, uh, at a, a given time to be able to collaborate with serious artists and make them more accessible and available to, to the audience. I'm sure there were anyone who is in the ministry listening to this <laughs> would be very interested, especially collaborating I with an so. artist such as yourself, <laughs> your, you know, your caliber. You. And it's wonderful that you want to give back. And you are an artist who gives back and you're so humble. Who, you. who have been role models in your life? Uh, I have a few role models, to be honest. Uh, I loved uh, uh, Maria Callas and, and her, the way she was shaping her career through her work, the way she interpreted the roles, the way she sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, she was a, a musician fr from inside out, you know, she, um, she knew her craft very well, not only on the technical side, but uh, when, she, uh, when she played Lucia, for example, or Violetta in Traviata, she, uh, uh, she was a perfectionist and uh, that's one of the things that I, I learned to do through, through the years, you know, to, um, 
listen to what the uh, the composer uh, meant to uh, to express through the music and through the lyrics. Placido Domingo, of course, was uh, uh, my great hero. You know, as I was growing up to be an opera singer, and um, I remember meeting him when I was uh, 23 years old, something like that. And uh, he invited me backstage at the Metropolitan Opera, and uh, I sang Lucia Vanastelle and Una Furtiva Lacrima from uh, Elisir d'Amore. And he gave me some fantastic, very valuable advice, you know, about uh, how to not push the voice and where to support, you know. And uh, a few years later, he invited me at the Herodaticus to sing Granada with him. And then we did a concert uh, together where we sang, you know, uh, songs from operettas and, uh, and arias and great songs. So we shared the stage together. So I thought that was like uh, amazing Singing for me. Singing with your master. Yeah. <laughs> Singing with, uh, yeah. with my hero wow. was, uh, was, I don't know, I felt very proud yeah. about that. I'm very proud to be Greek, to uh, uh, leave, um, I mean, we left Africa when I was four years old, but I lived in Greece most of my life. So Greece is my country. Greece is uh, how I feel and, you know, my whole uh, personality, my energy, you know, is very Greek in that sense. And I'm very proud of that, of my heritage, you know. And coming from um, very, um, uh, not very, um, you know, quite humble circumstances, you know, as a, as a child, uh, it was a great uh, thing to uh, to go to London to play in the West End. I was so proud that I made my parents proud, and um, and, and that I managed to. And all of Greece to... proud. <laughs> and all of Greece proud, of course. Uh, but um, I uh, I think I think I, that's what made me different. You know, the fact that I I had the Greek energy and the Greek sun and passion and passion, in a sense, made me different to any other performer. So. Uh, I was lucky to have that. That's wonderful. <laughs> what are some unforgettable moments during your career? Some unforgettable stage moments? I would say the first time I performed in Les Miserables in London because uh, uh, I felt bigger. Suddenly I felt like I was uh, twice the size, you know, on stage. And, uh, and it was the first time I was performing uh, for, for an audience. Uh, that, that was paying a ticket to actually come and see me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, I was, uh, it was my favorite role, Marius, to play um, the romantic lead in, uh, in this show and to work with Trevor Nunn and to work with Cameron McIntosh and uh, you know, the whole team in uh, Les Miserables in London was, was extraordinary for me. And of course, La Scala was great in the year 2000, playing Tony in West Side Story. Uh, that was, Incredible because we uh, we sort of performed the Jerome Robbins uh, um, direction, the the book. I, I would say the actual his direction of, uh, of how to play the role and how That's to. That's my favorite. Yes, it's West Side a great. Story. It's a well, great. And music. you were perfect. I mean, you just <laughs> fit in that role. It's a difficult role, uh, but uh, you know we rehearsed for about three months or so. Uh, we auditioned uh, a lot, you know, because we had uh, three different panels that had to hear how we uh, managed with the role. Because it was, you know, the, uh, so I, I came to New York first audition, then to Germany, and then to London, and then they made the final, final selection, and uh, that was it. Yeah, masterpiece, <laughs> really, really West Side Story. Um, would you ever think about playing around with other genres of music? Uh, what, I, what do you like? I do and I have time, done. When you're just hanging out, when you're just hanging out, well, what do you, you know, like to you sing? Know, what do you listen to? You know, I'm uh, I'm a classical crossover. Now that that uh, in itself uh, says a lot. You know, I'm not just classical, but I like to cross over. So I uh, I like to mix and match. So I sing a lot of uh, rock songs, a lot All of right. Sting, a lot of uh, uh, Freddie Mercury songs. Um, I mean, I, he was also one of my heroes uh, growing up. I thought he had this insane range uh, insane. in his voice. Insane. And, uh, you know, no one could sing in that sort of, uh, in a full voice, uh, using his whole range. And that was uh, one of those monsters, I would say, in uh, rock music. Uh, he was fantastic. Do you think that the new generation is. Um, <coughs> living up to the 
those talented artists that you just spoke about? I think, uh, I think they have the talent and, and many are yet to be discovered. Uh, I think um, uh, a lot of those, uh, the, the voice shows and uh, you know, the, competi the, the songs that uh, where young people go and compete and whatever, they are sort of ruining, in a sense, their uh, basis of singing and how they should be uh, working on their on their on their voice. I think uh, you know anyone who's serious should go to a drama school or should go to a music school. They should study an instrument. Uh, they should work on their voice, uh, uh, not only from uh, um, you know just by using their their natural uh, resources, but but from hard training. I think. Uh, you can't do it in any other way, you know, you have to study. And uh, Plaza Domingo gave me three words. He said uh, years ago, I said to him, what's the secret, what is your secret? He said, I have three words for you, work, work, work. And for me, I kept that for the rest of my life. And uh, you need to train, you need to train. There's no, there's no other way. <laughs> what is, would you ever consider teaching? Is that something in the future? I love for you? I love teaching. Uh, so I, do, I don't have the time, unfortunately, not yes. at the moment. But uh, but I do. Uh, I have done a few master classes where uh, I'm able to at least give the best part of myself to to these young people, especially if they're training on on roles that I've played in the past. That's uh, it's easier for me rather than saying I'm a teacher and I'll teach you how to sing because each voice is so individual and so different that there is no method in that sense. I mean, we can go through the, the exercises and certain exercises that have uh, helped train me in a sense, uh, but, uh, but I think you have to treat each individual with a lot of respect and, uh, and understand that they are different to you and they have a different body, they have a different uh, uh, sound, uh, let's say, than yours, and uh, you have to respect that. So being a teacher, I think uh, takes a lot of maturity and many years of, uh, of being in this business and you never know, maybe one day I'll do that. That's wonderful. Well, yeah. we're looking forward to it later. <laughs> I'm sure all the, all the students out there and people who, you know, just artists who want to be like you and you're their role model have so much to learn from you. you. Mara, you're doing wonderful things. You, you, you know, just don't stop. Uh, we follow you. You're lovely and we want so. all of you watching right now to come to Lincoln Center to see Mario's performance for a wonderful cause. What is your message to our viewers, Mario? Uh, love and peace and uh, togetherness. And I hope now more than any other time, we should be together, we should love each other, and uh, we should support each other, you know? And I'm counting <clears throat> on my Greek audience um, that I've known for so many years, and have had a, an amazing rapport to to be there to enjoy this great concert uh, with my musicians. We have so much to sing for, and uh, uh, you know we we will sing a lot of the songs that they know, uh, a lot of songs that are surprise uh, surprise songs, I would say. And also, uh, I have a great guest on this uh, show. Her name is Frances Raphael. She played the original Eponine in Le Miserable and won the Tony Award. Wonderful. And, uh, and you're treat. the first to know. What a treat! <laughs> Don't miss this, guys. Don't miss it. So, uh, so she will come, uh, will probably sing A Little Fall of Rain, which is the duet from, uh, from Les Miserables. And uh, she will sing songs from Chicago and from Nine. And, uh, and we have a special treat uh, for the Greek audiences. We'll sing a Greek song together. So she learned uh, a Greek song which we will perform for the first time. We're very the excited. Greek well, we can't wait. Thank you so much for being <laughs> thank here. You. Thank, thank you, you for, for giving me. back yeah. as you do. And thank you for sharing your passion thank and you. your talent to the world. Thank you so much. And I have to say that um, the Horatia Alger Association is, uh, is closely linked to this uh, concert. Mm -hmm and they are supporting us uh, to perform these three concerts in uh, North America, uh, in uh, New York and Los Angeles and uh, Canada. And also, um, uh, I have to say that they do some amazing work. You know, they give uh, scholarships to young people to go into higher education, and they don't have to be American. They could be Greek, uh, they could be Spanish, they could be 
uh, they have to be born in the USA and uh, uh, also young people who come from very difficult circumstances, from very poor backgrounds or broken families uh, who uh, might not have the chance to, uh, to study one day. These are the ones that are more eligible for, uh, for a scholarship and uh, the Horatio Alger has given over 100, 150 million uh, dollars to scholarships that for is these amazing people. wow what an endowment <laughs> guys look out for more information on what mario just said uh following on, on the following graphic maria thank you so thank much you. and we look forward to seeing thank you every you. time you come here you're a global citizen thank you, Yana, and every time you're here we want to grab you Χάρη στο πάρα πολύ. Εγώ ευχαριστώ. Να είστε καλά, πάντα με αγάπη και ελπίδα για όλο τον κόσμο. Ελπίδα. Έτσι. Όλοι μαζί. Όλοι μαζί.